Welcome to One Mind Zen. Tonight's Dharma talk is given by Hangdal Chita. A blind man had been visiting with a friend, sitting up late and talking. When he decided that it was time to go home, his friend said to him, let me give you this candle lantern to carry home with you. And the blind man, light and dark, it has no meaning to me. What use is a lantern? And his friend said, well, you will be walking home in the dark. And so you better take the lantern so other people will see you and not bump into you. The man agreed, and so he took the lantern, and holding it aloft, he started to walk home. And he had not walked very far before suddenly Sid, who was out for a jog, ran straight into him. And the man became very angry. And he said, what is the matter with you? Why don't you watch where you're going? Can't you see this lantern? And Sid said, wow, dude, I'm sorry, but like your candles burned out, man. You might want to check that. Gassan had a student studying with him for a good while. And when he was leaving, Gassan gave him this warning. Studying the truth speculatively is useful as a way of collecting preaching material. But remember that unless you meditate constantly, your light of truth may go out. So hopefully this isn't all just collected preaching material I'm giving you here. So these both of these stories, or at least some version of them uninfluenced by Sid, come from 101 Zen stories. And you may wonder why, why I've picked two very specifically about light and light going out and why a blind man might need a candle much of our teaching centers around the idea of ignorance or delusion the 12 originations the three poisons the things that we achieve or try to through skillful means situation relationship and function trying to get away from ignorance and delusion. So what's the root of the word? And it's interesting. I, I like to look at, at meanings of what we translate as our words. The, the word that we translate as ignorance or delusion is avidya. The root of that uh, is not, or other than, vidya, to see or to know. So what are we translating as ignorance and delusion? Literally, not seeing. The, the paradigm of being in the darkness as a teaching exercise. And of course, in, in the first story, that applies even potentially with a blind man that not seeing or not being seen is living in a delusion. And... and uh, her brother, Jinji, he recently wrote a blog uh, a few weeks ago where he also talks about seeing and not needing eyes, but hoping he can see. And for him, it's, it's the opening of compassion, the opening of what the teachings have been in process throughout his life of becoming for him. And it's a very vital concept. So... We're always struggling to see, to understand, to see clearly, to see without delusion, without our filters, without our prejudices. But how do we apply that? Even, even at that level, seeing is potentially just speculative and can fall into its own level of delusion. One of the statements of, of our Sangha is only don't know. 
So are we supposed to be a vidya to, to not know? No, that imperative is to not be caught up in knowing, to not think we know, to not be worrying about facts and figures. But we're still working vigorously, meditating, chanting, learning, studying, practicing wadu, whatever our practice is, to see clearly, to see through the delusions, to see through the things we cling to, to see, and I'll, I'll posit that that ignorance is what leads to the other poisons, that greed and aversion and anger and hatred and all these other things are a result of unclear or imprecise seeing, imprecise understanding. And for other fans of words, when we talk about Ghassan's statement about truth and and you know, adding the light to the truth, the, interestingly, the Greek term that is translated commonly as truth into English is alethe. And in Greek, a, it's again, away from, not, un, and lethe is the river of forgetfulness, the waters that you drink to forget. And so the concept of truth that comes from the Greek philosophers, the Stoics and Cynics, some of whom had some ideas very similar to portions of Buddhism. What is truth? It's unforgetting what is already present. Renowing what is already known, what might equate it to the Buddha nature. But again, this is speculative. So where do we go with that? into our daily practice beyond just preaching or going around and saying it's the truth because we're really good at that americans modern people it's the truth i have the truth i see i know everybody knows everything so in swampland flowers which is a, a fascinating collection of letters Tahui talks about ignorance and i'll, I'll give you Part of one of his quotes uh, or one of his letters. In the conduct of their daily activities, sentient beings have no illumination. So again, that, that concept, light, illumination, seeing. If you go along with their ignorance, they're happy. Now he's saying happy in a different way than ultimately happy because we know they're living in delusion. They're not happy, but we'll We'll jump over that little bit. But what he's saying is they want you to go along with their delusion. All the people that have all these facts and figures and opinions that they they doom scroll on whatever certain feed they've got and whatever medium that gives them more of the same thing that they're already convinced of, that's what they want is to be validated, verified. He goes on, if you oppose their ignorance, they become vexed. Call them out. 90% of the time, that doesn't work real well. Buddhas and bodhisattvas are not this way. They make use of ignorance, considering this the business of Buddhas. That's an interesting twist. Make use of ignorance. Since sentient beings make ignorance their home, to go against it amounts to breaking up their home, shattering their, their illusions. That's an uncomfortable place. Going with it is adapting to where they're at to influence and guide them. Now, is Tahui saying that we become ignorant so we can just get along with everybody and we can all just be happy? No. Is he saying we join in ignorance and delusion and, and fall down that, that nihilistic path where we're just, ah, nothing matters. It's all on it, man. Nothing matters. We, we don't exist. Nothing ultimately exists. So I can run around and be a jerk and live in delusion with everybody else so they're happy. No. We're back to that situation relationship function. We're back to that tenth bull. If we're going to walk with people, 
if we're going to have any hope of guiding and helping and influencing people, we have to kind of live where they're living. That doesn't mean we give up seeing or trying constantly to re-see. It doesn't mean we live ourselves in a state of delusion. It doesn't mean we are okay with their state of delusion. It means we have to, to get into the space, in the practice, back in the marketplace, where we're walking in that place, in that function, with the other sentient beings, and until they're ready, and we'll specify ready, not going in as the iconoclast and shattering all their stuff. You're not teaching anybody or helping anybody that's not ready if you just run in and smash their idol with a brick. You get through to them, you work through them, you figure out where they're coming from, you figure out, if you can, what their delusion is and where your delusion meets theirs. And then when you get to them to say, well, okay, maybe, then you start chipping away at that idol with the brick. And then eventually, maybe you can smash it, or maybe you can't. But how may I help you is working within the place where they have to live until you can see if you can help them live in a place that's more clearly lit.